Hello my friends and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video with myself and Marta. Hope you guys are having a good weekend so far. I am here as always with the latest tech news from the last 24 or so hours as of the 17th of October. Fun fact, it's uh, only a couple of weeks, uh, actually just over a week I should say, until my birthday. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that, we're here to talk about news, and the first thing on our itinerary today is something regarding SSD prices. So as you probably know, if you've been keeping your ear to the ground when it comes to all things tech news, or if you've watched one of our previous videos on uh, SSD prices, you'll know that the memory market is currently in a state of oversupply and prices have actually been pretty low. But further price reductions are expected for both DRAM and NAND flash in Q4 2020. And according to Trendforce, which was helpfully shared by storagenewsletter.com, and of course you can find that linked in the description below this video, overall memory ASPs are expected to drop by 10% for both NAND and DRAM in Q4 2020. But this is not just a flash in the pan sort of thing, at least according to analyst predictions, we are also expecting uh, a further pricing declines in early 2021. And DRAM price reductions are expected to slow down, but NAND flash pricing is expected to continue to decreasing. Now, obviously, this is going to have a knock-on effect to all sorts of things, including, of course, pre-built systems, as well as, of course, standalone SSD prices. And we are expecting to see a 10 to 15% decrease in SSD ASPs and 10% for the NAND flash for overall ASPs as well. So, of course, this is actually pretty nice timing because, as we already know, the PS5 will use any compatible SSD. And there's already been some SSDs announced that will actually be compatible with the PlayStation 5. But obviously, as we, as we get more and more approved, as we move closer to the launch, there will be undoubtedly more on the market and most likely after launch as well. So, obviously, if prices continue to decline, you could actually get yourself an extra SSD for your PS5 if you so wish for a bit cheaper than you would have paid previously and of course if you're waiting to get a SSD for your PC or whatever then obviously wait a little bit longer and you might manage to save yourself quite a bit of cash. But the bulk of today's video is focused all on AMD as there's quite a bit of news regarding Ryzen and a couple of extra bits as well. So we're going to begin our AMD segment with some pretty good news from MSI. You may recall just the other day I discussed how AMD detailed how to actually get your 400 series motherboard working for Ryzen 5000 CPUs. You can of course find that video excuse me, linked below if you haven't already seen it. Go check it out, you will find everything you need to know there. But for this particular topic, MSI has confirmed in an official press release that their entire, I repeat, their entire 400 series motherboard lineup will actually support the Ryzen 5000 family. But let's see what they actually had to say. You can, of course, find a link to their statement below, but it, they said, quote, AMD has officially announced Zen 3 architecture Ryzen 5000 series processors on October 8th. The latest Zen 3 processors have significant performance improvements compared to the previous 7nm Ryzen 3000 series processors. For the upcoming processors, MSI has released the latest Agisa Combo PIV2 1.1.0.0 for all X570 and B550 series motherboards to perfectly utilize the PCIe 4 performance. In response to the upgrade demands, AMD also mentioned the BIOS update for selected 400 series motherboards to support Ryzen 5000 series processors will be ready in January 2021. To respond to our users' anticipation, MSI is announcing that all 400 series motherboards, including X470 and B450 Max or non-Max products, will receive BIOS updates later on that can support Ryzen 5000 processors. All the evaluation is in progress under the R&D team, a detailed BIOS release schedule will be announced after the BIOS code is provided by AMD. Regarding the 300 series motherboards, including X370, B350 and A320 chips, AMD's current official information points out that they are not supported. So yes, you are still going to have to wait like you would with 
pretty much every other board, to be honest, but it's still pretty nice that MSI have confirmed that their entire 400 series um, lineup will actually support Ryzen uh, 5000, because that's obviously nice to know that you don't have to worry about accidentally bricking your motherboard or whatever, because one of the things that I discussed when I talked about how to actually get to your motherboard's um, Ryzen 5000 ready is, in some cases, they're actually going to be like a point of no return thing that you can't undo it, and would actually kind of remove support for older processes obviously you want to be super safety sure that this motherboard is actually going to work before you update it and potentially make yourself unable to use the processor that you currently have. So some pretty nice news there as I said from MSI but we're going to move on now to some pretty impressive overclocking for the 5950X. So basically what we have here is some Geekbench benchmark entries which have been helpfully spotted by Tom Appisack over on Twitter. And what we can see here is the Ryzen 9 5950X being pushed to pretty impressive lengths, all the way up to 6.0 GHz. Now one thing you've all noticed as you're looking at the videos, I'm showing them on screen, that these entries don't actually say that they're the 5950X, but they do use the AMD OPN code, 100, and then a bunch of zeros, 5937. 46 slash 35N, which can be traced back through to the 5950X. But regardless of all of that, you can see that the processor was being pushed up to 6 GHz. Now, something interesting and uh, pretty cool that was supplied by videocards.com, who also covered this particular result, um, you can actually see the actual clock speeds of the sample used for the benchmarks and uh, they have a link in their website where you can download the JSON outputs and you can see the data that was recorded during the test and if you download it you can quite plainly see that the clock speed was between 5.922 to 6.02 um, gigahertz of course. Now obviously it goes without saying that I'm going to say it anyway because you know why not that we're not going to achieve this just willy nilly. This probably had some pretty impressive cooling behind it, maybe even possibly, you know, liquid nitrogen. Obviously, I don't know the cooling setup that this used, but whatever it was, it obviously had some oomph to keep it cool. But to be honest, even if this was achieved under the absolute best setup with liquid nitrogen and all the rest of it, it's still very impressive that the 5950X was, was pushed to this number. I did speculate that <laughs> given that the Ryzen... 5000 series on the top end CPUs was at 4.9 that it could quite easily be pushed over the 5 gigahertz mark but I didn't even think about 6 gigahertz to be honest but it seems that it has been achieved. But speaking of benchmarks we actually have yet more benchmarks for the Ryzen 5000 series just showing how much Zen 3 is, has improved versus its predecessor. So we've got a few people to thank for this one. The initial benchmarks were posted on the Sysoft Sandra database um, and then were spotted by Tom Apisoak over on Twitter. So thank you very much to him, of course. But they were also compiled into charts by Harukaze5719. And they're very cleanly laid out the information that I'm showing off to you here. But of course, you can find a link to his original tweet and Tom Apisak's Twitter account as well uh, in the description below this video. So, so as I said, these benchmarks were very much focused on the difference between Ryzen 5000 and Ryzen 3000 processors and were all tested on an MSI Meg X570 Unify motherboard. So we have a couple of benchmarks here, the first of which is the processor arithmetic or GOPS and processor multimedia MPIC slash S tests. And again, thanks to Harakaze for compiling these into these lovely charts. So, let's talk specific, shall we? Unsurprisingly, at the top, you can see that the granddaddy 5950X is reigning supreme with 611.94, but surprisingly, the 3950X actually comes significantly ahead of the 5900X of a score of 562.11 and then of course the 5900X comes in at 501.27 and then the 3900X is just below that of course as you can plainly see 423.82 5800X scores 342.18 and then the 3800X is 287.82 but yes if you look at the comparisons even between like say the 3800X and the 5900X just for example the the difference you know it speaks for itself to be quite honest with you it's very very impressive I mean when AMD did show off Zen 3 and saw that 19% IPC gain 
I was pretty damn impressed. Anyway, enough of that, let's move on to our next result, which again is processor multimedia, and we see once again the 5950X at the top and the 3950X taking the second place spot. Um, the 2066.49 score, 5950X of course, then the 3950X scored 16 to 50.49, and then the 5900X calls 1744.13. The 3900X comes in at 1287.79 and just training behind it with a score of 1252.24 is 5800X. And then the 3800X once again bringing up the rear uh, with a score of 881.46. But let's put those numbers into some sort of context, shall we? I pretty much just throw a bunch of numbers at you. But for the arithmetic test, which once again was the first results I'd already went through, the 5950X is roughly 9% faster than the 3950X, and the 5900X is 18% faster than the Ryzen 9 3900X, whereas the 5800X is roughly 20% faster than the 3800X. As for the second set of results, though, the Ryzen 9 50 5950X is a very impressive 25% faster than the 3950X and the 5900X is up to 35% faster and the 3900X outpaces even the 3950X but the 5800X is 42% ahead of the 3800X which is pretty nuts to be honest with you. So yeah, Zen 3 just continues to be very impressive. Now, of course, these are arithmetic and multimedia tests, but still just goes to show the improvements versus um, the Zen 2 cards, especially the arithmetic tests show that very impressive, stronger IPC gain for Zen 3 versus Zen 2. Obviously, we all want to see more benchmarks, more gaming benchmarks, more tests, but obviously that's going to have to wait until the uh, pro processors, excuse me, are in reviewers hands hopefully fingers and toes crossed we can actually get our mitts on a sample but we're not promising anything because obviously it depends on what companies wanting to give us we are going to of course um, contact some folks and see if we can but obviously we'll, we'll update you guys as soon as we know anything uh, regarding that anyway just as a final quick thing we're just going to touch on rx6000 quickly as i'm sure you guys are undoubtedly aware we are roughly a week and a half away from the official unveiling of the rx6000 series as amd are going to be revealing it on october the 28th and gpuz has now officially added support for navi 21 so i thought i'd let you guys know you can see the full information over at tech power up which of course where you can download uh, gpuz from but you can also see as just like an interesting tidbit you can see added support for intel's discrete graphics or dg1 has also been added as well and a few other um, extra fixes and support things have been uh, thrown in the mix but the main thing that i wanted to discuss with this one is of course the navi 21 slash rx 6000 series support anyway that has been done for this video there will be another video up today whether or not it'll be up before this one is anyone's guess but do keep your eyes peeled for that if my video is up first paul is handling that one and he is going to have a ton of console news for you guys anyway thanks so much for watching have a good weekend guys and i'll catch you next time Bye bye